from Forex Traders Daily. This is your daily analysis with Ross Mullins, live from Richmond, Virginia. Hello, everyone. This is today's video analysis for January 18, 2016. I hope you had a great weekend and are ready to get started trading this week. In today's video, I'm going to do a general overview of each of the U.S. currency pairs in anticipation of this week's trading. It is important to note for us today, looking at the news calendar, we have very little news on the calendar for the day today. No data being released or no real news events happening during the U.S. trading session. We do have, of course, a bank holiday here in the U.S. today, so it's very likely we see very little or very muted movement in the market today during at least during the US trading session for all of the pairs including the US dollar. Let's get started right here on the USD CHF, the US dollar versus the Swiss franc. In the past several weeks here in the, the morning analysis videos in the live trade room, we've been studying several different patterns. We see the previous uptrend along the blue trend line, downtrend along the red trend line, and the rising channel between the black and the blue trend line. Nothing really new today to speak out speak about is we're right smack in the middle of that rising channel. Probably most important to note is you go back here a little bit further to the left hand side of the chart and you can see this red circle right here uh, to the left of the blue trend line, not the oval at the bottom, the red circle right here. You can see the market holding between the green and the pink shaded area for several day period. Well, that's important because we bring it to the right hand side and guess what? One, two, three, four, five days have been holding between the green and the pink shaded area. Let's zoom it in a couple of times and we can really get a handle on that. One, two, three, four, five days holding between the green and the pink shaded area. The rising channel would of course lead us to a little bit of a, uh, an upside bias here for this pair, which would mean that we'd be looking for buys on dips into the support, which is of course right now the pink shaded area and actually surrounding that parity level 1.0. You can see the top of the pink zone 1.0010, the bottom 99.90. So we're just surrounding the parity level inside that pink shaded area. Support would likely be there targeting back to, of course, the green shaded area, which we've already seen so far today. If at any time it breaks above the green zone, we'll look for it to continue to pressure higher in the direction of our channel, and the next resistance level would be back into the 1.0125. Uh, a little bit higher into that would be into 1.0150 at the top of the yellow zone. So that becomes your next target. But that assumes that we get a breakout above the green zone, which obviously we haven't had yet. Same thing on the bottom side, underneath the pink zone, 99.90 or so, we begin looking for it to take a little bit of a dip lower, may or may not get a little bit lower than that blue trend line, heading on back down here towards 99.00, 99.30, which is the blue shaded area down here at the bottom. So nothing really to speak about other than today, watching for the market to continue to bounce around between the green and the pink shaded area, down to the four hour time frame gives us a little bit of a different perspective because we have seen it spike above the green zone. We have seen it spike below the pink zone. But again, for the most part, we know from the daily time frame, it's just been kind of stuck inside this pink shaded area. If you're looking for buys, wait for it to go down to the pink zone if you're, or break above the green zone. If you're looking to go short here, then likely the green shaded area may provide you an opportunity for the day today on the U.S. franc. Moving on to the Euro dollar EURUSD, very similar, very, very similar situation. The blue trend line, black trend line, falling channel here. Uh, again, don't get too caught up on where these trend lines are, the, the red and the blue trend line, the, the channel lines here. Give or take a look, give it a little bit of leeway here and there, because if you get, if you start to get caught up with it, you, you will start to recognize breakouts that may not be real true breakouts. You'll look at false breakouts. If you start to get too uh, precise or too uh, caught up in where these lines are in, associate, uh, in association with the current market price. But anyway, we've touched the top, the red trend line. The black box is probably the most important thing here for the euro dollar. Let's go ahead and zoom it in. Let's take a look at this black box. For the past one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight days now, we've been inside this black box. We've been bouncing around inside. There's a big blue candle on the left hand side of the black box. And ever since then, we've just been bouncing around in there. Well, guess what? We have resistance. 109.20, 109.40. That's the orange shaded area here at the very top of the chart. That's your resistance. You do not want to go long or buy as long as it's underneath that resistance. Last week, we saw an attempt to break out above there. It was a very short-lived attempt and came right back underneath it. 
So we see attempts to break out, but no real breakouts. That's what we're going to need to see for trending movement. Either above your open and close, we start to look for it to go higher, maybe back up here to the blue shaded area in our next resistance level. Otherwise, underneath there, potential for it to go down, challenge back down here towards the bottom into the green zone, and again, a breakout underneath there, as we've spoken about over the past couple of weeks. We look for it to go lower, back down to the blue shaded area at the bottom into the 1.0700s. That's all the way down here at the bottom of the falling channel. Again, don't get too caught up on where the red and the blue trend lines are. They're just guidelines to show us where the top and the bottom of the channel are, give or take a little bit of leeway. As Obviously, like last week, we saw the market spike above it and then come right back down below it. 100 period exponential moving average is the green line coming into play. That's holding as resistance as well. So I think as long as it's underneath 99, 20, 40, the orange shaded area, you do not want to go long. Better opportunities to go short. Four hour time frame. We've already seen it challenge the orange shaded area. False breakout, turn back underneath it. Obviously, the yellow zone is somewhat of a hinge point. Above it, we've seen some support. If it gets underneath that yellow shaded area, underneath 10880, we likely look for the continuation lower back to the green zone for the euro dollar. Moving on to the GBP, USD, Great British Pound versus the US dollar. Obviously, this currency pair is reaching multi-year lows. You can see that here on the weekly time frame. Lowest lows, that has been in very, very long time. Becomes a very difficult situation when you're looking to go short. When you're at the very bottom of the trend, going short is a little bit unnerving because how much lower will it go? We don't know. It could continue to go down thousands more pips. They could go, turn around and go back up. We just don't know. So it's difficult to go short at the very bottom of the trend. So when do you go short? If you're looking to trade the trend, which is always a good idea, then when do you go short? Well, you go short as it rallies back into resistance, at least providing with lower risk. If you go short at the bottom, your risk is higher. If you go short as it rallies into resistance, your risk is lower. That's all there is to it. So wait for it to go back up if you're going to go short here on the pound dollar. Or the next thing you're looking for is a breakdown through support. It will be very interesting this week to see what happens with this blue shaded area. Obviously, that was support. You can see it back here on the left-hand side. So for the day today and until something changes, that will be our resistance, 1.4345 to 85. As long as it's underneath there, there is the possibility, just like what happened underneath the orange zone, to go short into the blue shaded area. Don't go short while it's down here at the green zone. That's your current support. So don't go short now. Wait for it to go back up to the blue zone, or the next opportunity would be for it to break out under the green zone. So those are really the only opportunities to go short. Going long, there's absolutely no reason to do that at the current moment. Moving on to the U.S. CAD, very similar yet opposite situation here on the CAD. Multi-year highs. It's been reaching into highs that it hasn't seen in quite a number of years. Again, very difficult to go long at the highest high. Now, it's an uptrend. You want to go long, but it's difficult to go long at the very highest peak high of the uptrend. So you wait for it to come back to support, give you an opportunity with lower risk and higher reward to go long until something changes, until the sentiment changes, the trend changes, which I don't foresee that happening anytime in the near future. Maybe a little bit of a pullback, but nothing extraordinary, I think, will happen with this trend in the near future. We've had a couple of areas that we've looked at as resistance. You can see the double red line was last week's resistance. This week, we open up a little bit higher into the double blue line and the pink shaded area. Now we've come back to that orange zone. That's very interesting for the day today. Down to the four-hour time frame again, we can see that. Look at that. Coming right back down here into this uh, orange shaded area. I'm going to get rid of that. Uh, coming right back down here into the orange shaded area. That's your spot to watch for the day today and this week, right here into the orange zone. 144.50 uh, to 144.85. That's the orange shaded area. You want to watch that. Becomes an opportunity to go long, targeting again your last resistance high. The risk in the scenario is pretty well uh, easy to see. It breaks underneath 44.55 or so. Then we likely look for it to head on back down here towards this purple shaded area. That becomes your next support target on the way back down. So I still think you want to go long, maybe here at the orange zone, uh, with your risk just underneath it in case the market changes its uh, trend and sentiment for the U.S. CAD. Moving on to the U.S. Yen. Again, very difficult to go short when the currency pair is at the lowest points of the trend that it's been in. This is actually the weekly time frame, and I wanted to start here because the double black line, I know it's kind of hard to see. There's a lot of horizontal lines here, but the double black line that we see down here on the weekly time frame, look at the lows. We're going back a few years, back into 2014. You see some lows here. Then you see some lows here. 
And guess what? Now we're into that same area where that double black line is rising along the pattern. So very interesting. If it stays within there and gets above it, we might be looking for a reversal. Break underneath it, we look for a continuation of the downtrend, maybe very dramatic here for the U.S. yen. Take it down to the daily time frame. That is those double black lines down there. You can see us challenging the purple shaded area. Look at this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight days now challenging that purple shaded area into the low 117s. So again, I don't think today is a real strong breakout. It opened below it, but it's now trying to get back inside of it. Uh, if it gets back above, let's say, the 117.50 level today, uh, it's very possible that we continue to head on back higher, back towards the green shaded area, because that's been the pattern of the trend so far. So above the purple shaded area, we likely head back up towards the green shaded area. That will become our resistance. If it opens and closes, it's already open. If it closes below the purple sh shaded area, we might be looking for a little bit of a push back down towards the blue shaded area at the very bottom of the chart. So again, nothing really extraordinary or exciting happening here. It's just been kind of challenging and bouncing around in here. Back above 1750, 117.50, we might look for the, some beginning stages of a reversal. Staying underneath 117.20, we look for the challenge back down into the low 116s for the U.S. yen. Australian dollar, AUD, USD, we've been studying the long-term pattern. This is the weekly time frame, downtrend, triangle pattern between the red trend lines. We've studied that many times. Guess what? We broke out and have made a new low. Does that mean it can't go lower? No. It doesn't mean it has to reverse? No. Uh, there's just... It's at a very uh, interesting area, as we've seen with most currency pairs, at historic support or resistance levels, historic uh, multi-year lows or highs. This one, no different. We're at a multi-year low here for the Australian dollar. It is interesting that we did break out underneath the triangle pattern, so that becomes the direction that we want to focus our efforts in. Down to the daily time frame, and I look at this yellow zone, and I say, hey, there's the last low back here on the left-hand side inside that yellow zone between 69.10 and 69. 45 or so, 40, that yellow shaded area. That was our multi-year low back here. Now we're underneath that multi-year low. So that today is your resistance there between 69.10, 69.40. That's your resistance. Staying underneath there provides an opportunity to go short again. If it breaks above there, that's the risk in the scenario. So if you're going to go short, at least allow it to come back up to the yellow zone to give you a better opportunity for risk reward. The blue zone, obviously your multi-year low now uh, into the low uh, 6800s. You definitely don't want to go short as long as it sits on top of that. You expect that there's possibility of doing what today's done. If it breaks under the blue zone, we look for it to continue the downtrend for the Australian dollar. For our time frame, we've already seen it tap the yellow zone once today. I don't think it's out of the picture that we couldn't see it tap there once again today. So if you're looking for lower risk, higher reward to go short, that's the yellow zone. Don't sell it into the blue zone. That just doesn't make logical sense to go short into support. So allow to go back up to the yellow zone to go short. Uh, your risk becomes better. If it breaks above there, of course, you don't want to stay in it too long. Likely to go back up towards 7,000 for the Australian dollar. And last but not least, the New Zealand dollar. Similar situation uh, to the Australian dollar. We've seen a significant fall here for this pair. Uh, historically, we see some resistance congestion inside the blue zone. I think you want to go back to the blue circle over here on the far left-hand side of the chart. Take a look. One, two, three, four, five days or so uh, around the inside between the purple and the blue shaded area. That gives us a clue of what we could watch for today. The blue shaded area... 64.80 to 65.15 is your current resistance, and that becomes the opportunity to go short. Lower risk, higher reward, selling into resistance. The risk in that scenario is that it breaks above there to go higher. Trend, sentiment, all of that down. Definitely looking for a new challenge of the multi-year lows down here into the 6200s. Obviously, the purple shaded area is your current support. You don't want to go short as long as it's on top of that 6400 area. Uh, waiting for it to break through there would be the next opportunity. Four-hour time frame, again, uh, doesn't really change it. But if you're looking for an intraday short, get as close as possible, 6480 to 6,500, at least it gives you lower risk and higher reward. Target the purple zone, under the purple zone goes lower. Anytime it breaks above that blue zone, 6,500 or so, 6,510, look for a little bit of a rebound higher 
for the New Zealand dollar. From Forex Traders Daily, this has been your daily analysis with Ross Mullins. If you would like to get Ross's analysis on all the currency pairs he's watching and all the trades he takes today, join him in his live trade room by clicking on the link below. Please leave any comments you have about today's video in the comments section below.